And I am here uh, live with some fellow chairs of other Democratic parties in South Carolina. Uh, I'm not going to introduce them directly. I will let them introduce themselves. So going around, and we'll start with you, Tamika. Uh, so let's start with your name, what county you're the chair of, and a little bit of what you do when you're not doing Democratic Party stuff. Okay, I, my name is Tamika Michelle Wilson. I am the Union County Democratic Party chair uh, as of last year. So brand new in the seat uh, at the convention or local convention. Um, and when I'm not doing Democratic Party business, I am volunteering in way too many Union County <laughs> community type of events. So I think I may be stretching myself a little thin, but uh, I care about what happens in the county that I live in. So I feel like uh, I'm taking the expertise that I've gained over my 20 years, five months and eight days in the military. I'm a retired Lieutenant Colonel. So I figure continuing service is, is kind of the thing that we do in our family. So I'm happy to do it. Are you native to Union, born and raised? No, I was born in Frankfurt, Germany. My dad is retired Army, sergeant first oh. class. Uh, he was signal NCO and I'm an engineer officer. So it's definitely in our blood, lots of military throughout our family. So I can yeah. barely tell the German accent. That's incredible. Was ist das? Uh, yes, <laughs> I have a lot of them. I like sauerkraut too. All right, Angela. Well, my name is Angela Jeter. I am the Spartanburg County Democratic Party Chair. Uh, like Tamika, I am a veteran as well. Uh, I did not retire. I just served a, a few years in the military. And I, my background is accounting and finance. Uh, and I'm currently studying for the CPA exam. And I started an accounting consulting firm. So when I'm not doing that, as well as like to be a volunteer and I'm on several boards within the community. So I am very much, very active and I have a little fur baby. Oh, Aww. what kind? Dog or cat? Dog, I'm a okay. dog person. Mother's allergic to cats. So uh, a <laughs> little Jack Russell Terrier Chihuahua mix. She's about 11 pounds. Right. And oh, she that's... thinks she's about 211 pounds. <laughs> I, I, we have a teacup Yorkie that's the same way. She thinks she's 10 times the size she is. Uh, well, for those of you in Union and Spartanburg that don't know me, my name is Bill Kimler. I am the chair of the Greenwood County Democratic Party. And as you can probably tell from my accent, I am not native to these here parts. I am a transplant from upstate New York, uh, moved down here in 2016. And I am in the IT business, uh, software development. I work for a global company. Uh, so I deal with uh, developers in Israel and uh, consultants in California. And I'm talking with people in Germany and England all the time. In fact, my boss is in Germany. So I'm gonna have to take some lessons from you, Tamika, on how to communicate more effectively with him. Uh, so that's what I do when I'm not sharing, you know, full-time job. Uh, so I have a, a series of questions that I'd like to throw out to the group and get your, your answers on. And I'm going to start with an easy one. Uh, and I'll start with you, Angela, and just ask, why are you a Democrat? Have you given it a long, hard thought and you picked being a Democrat? What, what led you to this party? Well, I, I felt like it was the party of inclusiveness and a party that was for everybody. There was a time when I know those roles were reversed and Republicans were more in line with the values now that Democrats have and vice versa. But I, I felt like the Republicans had gone very one percenter on me. And since I'm not a part of that one uh, percent and their target that's what their target seemed to me to be. And it didn't address the needs of me as an African-American woman. And that was why I chose to be a Democrat and have always voted Democrat and been a Democrat. Awesome, how about you, Tamika? Uh, well, my, um, I have a younger sister and um, uh, I went Army, she went Air Force and, and promptly got and out. So I'm just saying. <laughs> Hey, my uh, my son who just finished college is heading into the Air Force. Yeah, but she Air wants to, Force. 
she likes to tease me that on paper I'm like the classic Republican and I'm like what what do you mean she's like yeah then you show up in the room and they're like wait a minute and I'm like (laughs) no uh interestingly enough I am uh, I identify as an independent so you know there was probably some consternation that I you know put my name in the hat to be the chair but I was willing to do the work and you know, I would say 90%, probably 95% of the things that Democrats believe in, I believe in. Uh, but the th- the key thing that I, I really have a problem with is kind of a, you know, the blanket, you know, we all lockstep to, to, the, to the tune. So that's probably, you know, after 20 years, five months and eight days of being told what to do, how to do it, when to do it, to, to a certain extent, it just doesn't seem you know, a good fit for me. So I think independent um, caucusing with the Democrats makes sense for me. Yeah. When, um, when I was raised, I was raised in a very strict Roman Catholic family, Italian mother and uh, German Irish father. And, uh, you know, I was an altar boy, went to Catholic grade school through high school. So you talk about marching in lockstep and and indoctrination. I was there. And uh, I remember I, I went off to college and I, I'd say I was probably a young Republican my freshman year. And I, I cringe a little bit because I, and I still have it. I wrote a letter to the um, college newspaper, a letter to the editor about my pro-life stances and why, you know, the unborn is sacred and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I, I cringe looking at that now, but that was 17 year old me. And uh, after four years of college now, I was a math and physics major, so it wasn't like they were putting opinions about politics and policies during calculus class, but it was it was mixing with other people, uh, all races, all genders, all sexual orientations, just, you know, the, the, the multicultural aspect of it really opened my eyes uh, and I got a, a good education. Um, not from books, not from teachers, but just from other people and other life experiences. And I think since then, uh, Tamika, for most of my life, I would have classified myself as independent as well. I always voted for whomever I thought was the most qualified. I voted for John McCain that first time around. I thought Barack Obama was a good guy, but he seemed like he was 22 years old. And I wanted somebody with experience as my president. I was nervous about this Sarah Palin person, but I like John, you know, and, and so he got my vote. Uh, four yeah. years later, I was all in for Barack Obama. I thought he had done a fantastic job uh, in yeah. his four years. So I agree with you on the independent streak that we should not be of an identical mindset. But 95%. I'm on board with the Democratic uh, way of thinking, you know, and, and that's just where I am. I there, there might be a lot more of us that are in that in that spot. Yeah. Uh, but you feel like you have to choose. You're you're yeah. in this environment. They want you to choose, you know. Yeah. And I don't know if that is is where we need to be at in the United States. Obviously, with all the 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 dissension and the you know, it's like we can't get to the common ground area. Right. And in so fact, maybe that's where we have to go. the first presidential vote I ever cast was for an independent. Any wow. guesses on who that was? Famous Ross guy. Perot? Ross, Ross Perot. Perot. Ross for boss. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's, I was in college at the time and Ross Perot was making his waves. And that is who for whom I cast my vote. I just thought he was just oh. kooky enough to do a good job. And I wasn't enthralled with Clinton or Bush. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm probably not your typical Democrat in that I do look at candidate, but I will more likely than not look at the Democratic candidate unless that Republican has something to offer. Um, really, really has something to offer, then I'll then they they'll get my vote. Yeah, well, that's good that we can keep open minds and and we don't you know demand that everybody be in perfect lockstep. So. <laughs> Well, being a first time chair, um, what would you say was your biggest challenge uh, that specifically because you were a first time chair? So you got to take out the coronavirus because everybody was dealing with that and the pandemic and, and all that. But just the fact that you're a first time chair, what was the most difficult thing for you? Now, I'll, I'll start off on this one. Probably most difficult for me was the transition. Uh, there, there wasn't a playbook that was left to me or, you know, Hey, here's, here's all the things you need to know, you know, a peaceful transfer of power and all that. 
uh, it was a lot of figuring things out, figuring out who's who and where's where and what's what and what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do. Um, I think kind of learning as you go, uh, it, it could have gone, gone a lot better, I think, if, if there had been a better transition. What do you think, Tamika? What was your toughest challenge as a first timer? I, I think the transition and, and we had a, a lot of good people who were uh, entrenched, if you will. I don't, I don't want it to be a negative thing, but um, you get, kind of get used to the status quo. Um, and, you know, folks who didn't necessarily want to move, want to change. Um, and I know I was, you know, a radical change, I think, because um, I'm coming in with the mindset. I think my challenge for me was to take the military hat off um, <laughs> because I'm used to telling people what to do <laughs> and, and, you know, operating in the space that I am no longer in the military and all of us are volunteering our time. Yeah. So it really became a, um, a lesson in collaboration and consensus and um, uh, picking through individual skill sets to see where they fit in, how can they contribute to uh, Union County Democratic Party. And the one thing that I think has been great, and you're probably gonna ask that question next, is the, the team that coalesced after uh, I was elected really stepped up. They really stepped up. And I, man, hats off to, to our committee and all of the volunteers who really said, okay, we're ready. You know, we're gonna support you and we're gonna support Union County. So it became uh, very obvious that we had the right people in place uh, going forward, so. Yeah. How about you, Angela? How did you fare in your first year? Well, uh, I had a little bit more time in. I actually got elected in 2018. So I had been in place, but I do understand because when I came in, it wasn't a, an easy transition. We had no money in the bank. We had no headquarters. So many of the pieces that were not there, and I had to Unlike Tamika, I had to deal with some people that weren't sure they wanted a black chair. You're kidding. And that was something that, that threw me. I wasn't prepared for that. But I'm the first time they've ever had a black female chair. Hmm. And hmm. there are still some of our older Democrats that are not sure how they feel about that. So they haven't really participated in the party at the level that I thought that they would. And so it has forced me to look at, you know, the composition of our volunteers and a lot of things that we do. Like Tamika, there's a little, you know, there's chaos being a party chair, no matter how hard you try, there's gonna be some chaos. But I, I need a little bit of organized chaos. And that was the part where I got a lot of pushback because they were like, well, let's just do it by ear. No, we can't just do it by ear. We need to put some plans in place. There are some, you know, some basic foundational pieces that I felt like needed to be there. So, you know, doing all of that prior to the election kind of helped a little bit. But here's what they don't tell you. There's a big difference, and you're going to find that out in 2022 between a presidential election and an off-presidential election year. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be two different energies. You, you, I mean, this time around, we, we didn't have to do a lot to get people to at least get involved in the process, but you're going to see a totally different mindset as you prepare for the 2022 elections where people are like, oh, it's not a presidential year, so I don't concern myself with that. Or, you know, people that have just said, well, I don't really want to participate right now. Let's okay. change the topic to our lovely state party. I promise nobody at uh, Columbia <laughs> headquarters is going to see this video so we can be fully open and honest. <laughs> um, what I'd like to hear from you is name one good thing that you liked about the state party in supporting our efforts in the past year and one thing that uh, didn't go so well that you wish could have been done better. Well, the good thing was for the first time since I've been a party chair, I got money. <laughs> so I got hey. a check. 
Uh, no, you're talking about your good. party got a check, not you personally, right? Because no, the county party got. A oh, check. I was going to say because if you're getting paid, I need to talk to somebody in HR. Uh, no, but <laughs> you're going to find that you don't get any money. You know, your your coffers is what you can fundraise. Right. So that was nice getting funding from the from the party. The part that I was a little disappointed about is the communication. There's still a lot of room between the state and the county parties that's got to take place. Because I think the county party gets caught up in what they're doing and the state party gets caught up in what they're doing. And sometimes they don't do a great job of communicating with each other. And so that's the part that I think has been a struggle even from day one is we have to find that healthy balance so that I know what's going on with the state and the state understands what I need when I'm boots on the ground. Right. And, and that's the part that I think is going to be an ongoing continuing process uh, for some time to come. All right, Tamika, sounds like you've got your answers all lined up. Uh, yeah, no, she, she, she took some of mine. The money was yeah. definitely nice. And the, our, our folks here, uh, we got that check. They all said in the time they've, they've ever been involved with the party and it's, you know, 20, you know, maybe even 30 years for some of them, they don't rem remember getting money from the party. And, you know, it's a long time. So, um, I tried to like take credit, like I had done something fabulous or something. Like, that's all I mean. Hey, hey, that's what a politician. Did, that's being a politician. You're welcome. Because they'll welcome blame you, you for everything that goes wrong. So take some credit. <laughs> yeah, right. So no, but we were we were just excited. I mean, I think the 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 Democratic Party, the state party, um, I think they did a good job of of trying to include us in all of the initiatives. Uh, but I think what ultimately kind of happened is we got inundated with all of the initiatives. So there was some desynchronization that happened as a result of, um, you know, here, here are all of the things, um, you know, if, and if all of the things are a priority, then nothing's a priority, right? So we, we were struggling with okay, which of these things are we going to focus on? Um, so I think we probably didn't take full advantage of some of the things that would have been beneficial to Union County. And, and it's just just because we didn't have enough time. Um, and, you know, and, and um, Bill, you and I being brand new coming off of, you know, last year, it's like it was drinking from the fire hose. So I didn't know what I didn't know. And, and nobody was telling me. <laughs> so <laughs> I, when I was trying to, you know, figure it out, I'm sure I stumbled and made some mistakes, but then the light bulb went off. And, and I think part of that was because I was reaching out to folks like you and Angela and just asking, is this right? Am I doing this? What about this? Um, and shamelessly stealing tools from everybody. <laughs> so I was not, I was not shy about yeah, I'm gonna. I'm using this. I'm doing this. And if it came from the state party, yep, we're doing this. So if they had a program that we liked at the state party, you know, I put Union County in front of it, and I'm like, yep, we came up with that. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I think um, it's a healthy attitude if you lead your party with the mindset that you don't need or depend upon the state party. That you're gonna do it all, and then whatever they offer is icing on top of the cake, and then you'll take it and run with it. I think it's a healthy attitude. Uh, but the state party is at a very special place in the whole state where they can oversee and know what people are doing in every parties. And if they see something great that's happening in Orangeburg or happening in Charleston, they should be letting everybody else know about it. So they, they don't have to come up with all the programs. They don't have to come up with all the trainings. But if they could help facilitate that knowledge sharing, we have very talented people from corner to corner in this state. Uh, and, and, and you're right, borrowing shamelessly, that's the way we're going to be, we're going to win uh, in the next election okay. cycle. First, they had the best chair session this Sunday where, where Trav had invited all the chairs to participate and he okay. didn't have, he didn't have any speeches. He didn't have any PowerPoints. He just sat back and said, the floor is yours. 
and it just became a two hour session of sharing, griping, ideas, reinforcing that's the positives. First time he's the done that, was... In my tenure, that's oh. the first time he's done that since I've been chair. Yeah. Right. Well, listen, we're getting towards the end here, believe it or not. The time has been flying. So I'm going to have two more questions for the group. Um, share with me one thing you are extraordinarily proud of in your term as chair. What's the one thing you would you would highlight in a political advertisement at some point in the future? Who? Uh, wow. Uh, I think my fundraising. We, when I came in, we kind of had a, some events that were kind of um, so-so, and I kind of came in and pushed the envelope and actually had started doing something that no one else was doing in South Carolina, and that is I started doing galas, uh, where you do the formal dress-up with the, you know, the whole penguin suit and all. And we have been very blessed. I mean, our first speaker was Congressman Swalwell, uh, who was just about to announce he was running for president. And then we went, well, no, I, yeah, he was our first. Then we had uh, Governor Deval Patrick. No kidding. So, yeah, <laughs> we aim mm -hmm. for the stars. So, yeah, we've been very fortunate to be able to do those events, but being able to actually fundraise where you're bringing in thousands of dollars with just one event is it, it takes a lot of pressure off when you're looking at you know your monthly expenses for the party so i would think the fundraising kind of pushing that envelope and encouraging people to step outside of your usual just send everybody a letter and 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 hope for the best but, you know, those events were well attended. And, you know, at some point we had to cap them because we were getting too many people. So it, but it gave people an opportunity to, to see, because we'd also did our annual dinner that uh, we had Trev and Clyburn, Congressman Clyburn come in as our, as our speakers. So I feel like those were things to give people an opportunity to see leaders around the state and not just here in yeah. Spartanburg. How about you, Tamika? I think it would be our um, visibility and exposure. Um, we really worked hard to be responsive in a COVID-19 environment. So we had to change how we did business. Um, so we did outdoor get out the vote voter registration drives and we partnered with small businesses in our community who probably would have been suffering had we not basically brought folks to those venues so, and you know every time we came we ate you know if it was a restaurant um, and most of them had some sort of outdoor service um, and we had a, a outdoor um, get out the vote, go to registration drive, meet the candidates, um, uh, block party in last October. And it's something that, that's never been done in, in Union County, to my knowledge. And as a result of that, you know, we had vendors outside, we were able to use, we actually located right in front of the courthouse at a uh, historical uh, black building, the LW Long Community uh, Resource Center. And people were like, wow, you guys are doing a lot. And my mantra, my mantra to the team was, I want somebody to come up to you and say, I'm tired of seeing the Democratic Party. And, and we succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> we succeeded. We're like, That's awesome. That's something. awesome. Yeah, and, I, and you know, I've been seeing your activity on Facebook, and I've definitely stolen some ideas from you. You know, just the the sense of urgency to be out in the community. We're, we're, we're not just a social club that meets once a month. We have to be out doing the work and the business of being Democrats. And uh, it, sometimes it's food drives. Sometimes it's voter registration. Uh, it, it, it's it's got to be out. I think that's that's something we, uh, even I look up to you about. Uh, and, and try to try to reach reach unions level. If we get there, we'll be good. Uh, for me, you know, with um, with COVID and the fact that a good portion of our membership is of an older age and the most at risk 
uh, of the pandemic, you know, we had to shut down all activities, even indoor and outdoor for the most part. So we went purely virtual and just trying to keep that sense of normalcy, you know, having our breakfast meetings on the first Saturday of the month and continuing that tradition, um, continuing to have Zoom social calls, you know, just so we can get together and chat on a regular basis. But I think the pinnacle of that was our annual fundraiser in October is called the Carnell Drummond Mays Dinner. In fact, we added uh, Dr. Benjamin E. Mays to the name of our annual dinner last year because he's a Greenwood native, uh, you know, son of Greenwood and just a national figure in history. Uh, but we had gotten the idea watching our friends in Oconee County. They did a virtual dinner uh, two months prior, and we thought it was good. And, and me and our committee, we kicked around some ideas. But then we saw the Democratic National Convention and just how they pulled it off. And it was more than just here's a bunch of speakers, you know, and, and uh, have a good night. So we took kind of that emotional spirit of the Democratic National Convention and turned ours into a virtual event, all pre-recorded, but it was two solid hours with over 30 speakers participating in one form or another. Uh, not just giving speeches, but participating in narrating the history of Benjamin Mays or um, participating in the Pledge of Allegiance or singing a song, the national anthem. 30 over 30 different people participated in this gala event online that I look back at it today and I still get shivers. We even stole a, click for, a clip from Obama's campaign. Uh, you know that phrase, fired up, ready to go? That originated in Greenwood with Councilwoman Edith Childs and Barack Obama had created a whole advertising campaign featuring her in Greenwood and him talking about Greenwood that just really brought everything and gave us an emotional lift those final month uh, before the election. So I don't know that I'll ever be able to repeat that. So I hope to God this pandemic is gone by the time our next fundraiser <laughs> is around because that was just so much work to do. It's so much easier to do it in person, you know? All right. So, so to, to wrap up, and, and by the way, this has been fantastic. Thank you. I'm having so much fun with this. I want to do a quick lightning round. Ready? So this is just questions and answers with no explanations. So we'll, uh, I've got three lightning round questions. We'll, we'll start with Tamika. I just want an answer and then we'll move on to Angela. <laughs> All right. So Tamika, your favorite president in American history. Obama. Angela. <laughs> Obama. Okay. Well, I'm going to be unpopular. I'm going to pick uh, FDR uh, as a student of history. He's my, my personal favorite. I, I think it would be Obama from a personal level, but he didn't face a World War II. You know, so I got to give the edge to FDR for that. All right. Second question. We'll start with Angela. Imagine Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico become states but we had to lose another state in the process. <laughs> Which state would you lose? Mississippi. Mississippi is gone. Okay. For me, uh, it's bye-bye, Florida. You, you could become a resort uh, area, but uh, you're out of the country. <laughs> Tamika, what state would you lose? I used to live in Jacksonville, so people are going to hate me. <laughs> Bye, Florida. Ah! <laughs> All right. All right. We're like minds. All right. Last <laughs> question. And uh, I guess I'll answer this one first. The Equal Rights Amendment is finally about to pass, but it requires you to do one of the following. I'm going to give you three options. Which one would you pick and go with in order to get the Equal Rights Amendment to pass? Would you, A, attend a MAGA rally in full MAGA gear? B, throw an anti-mask fit on an airplane or C, speak at an upcoming Proud Boys rally. You had to do one of those three in order to get the Equal Rights Amendment. Ooh. Which grenade would you throw yourself on? Now, for me, <laughs> I probably would attend the MAGA rally in MAGA gear because I'd, I'd blend in with everybody and probably would not be seen. <laughs> All right, Tamika, what would you choose? MAGA rally, well, anti-mask um, fit, or speak at a Proud Boys rally? I, I would, uh, I'm going to wear my mask. So that's not going to happen. Um, and the Proud Boys are cray cray. 
um, crazier than MAGA. So I would be full red gear MAGA. <laughs> oh, right, I'll, save, I'll save you a seat next to me for comfort. <laughs> Angela, which one are you choosing? I'm doing the anti-mass raid, man. I oh, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if you don't plan on ever flying again, that that could be a good choice. That's just one and done. <laughs> well, uh, I appreciate the, the you guys are joining me on this. It, it, if anything, I help it helps humanize us. I mean, we're just flesh and blood like everybody else. We don't have any magic powers or any special training in this world to be leading a county Democratic Party. We're volunteers just like everybody so else. So right? says you, sir. So says you. We're superheroes. Uh, we need to start talking like that, okay? <laughs> well, I never got my cape, so you we let me know when the against, when the we cape handouts. Thanos up in this piece, so we were, we were like superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> you have any and last? I'm correct. We are we are non monetary paid volunteers. Yes. <laughs> any uh, any last words or final comments before we go? I think if, if you're chair, you got to have a sense of humor. There's a lot of times when things are very serious and you're going to get blamed for a lot of stuff that you don't even know about. And you got to be able to have a sense of humor to balance it out. So you got to have a good, strong uh, personality that can handle a, a lot of what's going to be coming at you because it's going to be coming fast and hard and the appreciation will be low. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I echo that. And I think uh, you, you got to reach out to your fellow chairs. Um, you know, just talking to you two, I think probably put me over the hump and, and made me more comfortable with some of the decisions that I was making. Um, you know, whether we talked all the time or once or twice, it didn't matter. Um, because you know there's someone else that's going through some of the same challenges. So I think it's very helpful. So make sure you're reaching out if you're a chair. And I think we're all committing uh, that, you know, we don't plan on being chairs forever and that there's going to be, you know, hopefully more coming down the pike to replace <laughs> us. But I am committing here on record that I'm going to do everything in my power to help whoever succeeds me. Now, they don't have to agree with everything I did and they can feel free to change it all up but I'm going to try to hand to them on a silver platter as much as I was able to learn and do these, these few years. Um, Cause we, we only grow over time and we're all standing on the accomplishments of those who have gone before us, including me, you know, th this party survived only because of my predecessor, you know, he took the job when nobody else would. Uh, so we are where we are only where we are because of him. And I want to just try to put us in, you know, in the same position when I go. Hey man on that one. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah, I wish you all the best. Yeah. And uh, thank you for coming to spend some time with us. And uh, the, I, I am at your beck and call should you need me for anything as well. All right. Okay. All right. Thank Take you care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>